Now, Brett, while we've got you, I'm keen to get a bit of a, an update on the travel landscape that we're heading into in, in 2023. A lot of people uh, seem to be struggling with the current pricing levels. Do you see those high prices that we've seen in the travel sector moderating this year? Have you got any good news for us on that front? I have got good news, Ashley. Um, you know, we're going to see prices, I think, come down pretty quickly domestically. I think we're hearing by middle of the year, we're hopeful domestic prices will be back to pre-COVID levels. Um, and day by day, we're seeing more international carriers starting to come into Australia. We're seeing a lot of the Chinese carriers starting to, to open up now. Um, a number of the staffing issues that were also affecting um, our capacity outbound are starting to ease now. So um, we're expecting prices to really come off for 2023. So it's going to be a great time to get out there and travel and, and see the world. Brett, how did COVID change the way we travel in terms of getting back out there now? What are the key differences you're seeing? Yeah, well, a lot of trends that we're seeing now are still people a bit hesitant to go to continents like Africa, um, the subcontinent, India and Sri Lanka. There's been less demand. We've seen higher demand for places like Europe, uh, Japan opening it up in the US. So we've uh, we've seen travel demands continue. There's huge demand out there. It's just shifting as to where those patterns are going at the moment. Um, but certainly as um, countries restrict a lot of their easings, um, people start to realise you, you can actually go to most countries now unrestricted. Uh, we'll start to see those normal travel patterns start to play out. Um, but it's great to see a lot more dispersion as well. We're seeing a lot of our clients um, uh, enjoying more nature-based type activity, um, more active style trips like walking and, and cycling. Um, so it's pretty good from a wellbeing perspective, I think, when we're starting to see those sort of travel trends occur. And Brett, are people expecting more flexibility in terms of being able to cancel at the last minute, um, factoring in illness uh, in terms of, you know, wanting to be able to get refunds if they need to, if they can't travel at the last minute. Is that something that the, the sector's really had to respond to as well? It certainly has, Ashley, and I think the sector has really responded well to that. And I think this will be the norm going forward. I think uh, the new policies airlines have around being able to be a bit more flexible in changing and not having the big fees that, that are attached to that. Uh, most tour operators now have really good policies. Um, cancellations and, and, and people having to cancel for different reasons is well understood now. And I think most businesses are really supportive of that. Um, you know, and I think the more businesses can look after their clients from a cancellation perspective and, and a flexibility perspective, they're going to be better off because I think clients really respect that from businesses that look after them. Um, and certainly at Intrepid, we will try and have the most friendly uh, customer policies we can, we can offer.